Okay, I'm gonna be the person that changes the narrative here. Just because someone eats a lot of fiber doesn't mean that they're vegan, doesn't mean that they're vegetarian, doesn't mean that they don't like meat, doesn't mean that they are subscribing to some specific narrative. That's not the way it works. Fiber is awesome. And this is what would happen if you consumed 30 to 40 grams of fiber every day for a month, just to give context of how your life could change. We have to address the first thing, and that's digestion, right? I mean, that's a very simple one. Let's just get it out in the open. There's a lot of data to back up that the more fiber you take in, the more your stool frequency will improve, and the more your stool consistency will improve. Again, we don't need to spend a lot of time on that. I think that's a pretty important thing, and we already know that. But this next one is one that you would probably notice in about two weeks of increasing your fiber intake to maybe 35 or 40 grams per day. And again, we're talking things like psyllium husk, we're talking flax seeds, we're talking chia, we're talking those kinds of fibers too, not just going and eating a bunch of vegetables. And that's going to be your libido, your sex drive. There was a really wicked cool paper that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that took a look at a high fiber diet versus a low fiber diet. They found that the low fiber diet had a significant increase in the amount of sex hormone binding globulin bound testosterone. What does that mean? That means that the less fiber you take in, the more of your testosterone is bound to sex hormone binding globulin, meaning you have less testosterone being free, able to give you those characteristics or that sex drive, that libido. Now, to make matters even worse, the lower fiber group had a 13% increase in the excretion of urinary testosterone. So they excreted testosterone out through their urine 13% more than the group that had high amounts of fiber. Now, this is something that's clear as day that you will notice. If you started to increase your fiber intake, you notice within a couple of weeks that, wow, you know what, I feel better. And that's because your testosterone is probably circulating. And guess what? This has to do with women too. Now this next one makes a lot of logical sense. You'll notice within a few days, your skin looks better. Now we have to look at this very logically. If you are finally going to the bathroom more and you are excreting and able to have more soluble fiber that binds to, I hate the word toxins, but binds to those and helps you excrete them, your skin is going to look better. I mean, you've seen those people that are just radiant, they look good, their skin looks good, you can tell they're healthy. Okay, the other side of the equation is what is called the gut-skin axis. We've heard of the gut-brain axis, which is where if we take care of the gut microbiome by increasing fiber, it can improve our brain. Well, you can do the same thing with your skin. Your skin has a microbiome too. So when your digestive system has a lot of good gram-positive bacteria and you've got the right things going on, that gut-skin axis can reflect in how your skin looks. The next one is one that's gonna matter a lot and that's going to be fat loss. Now there's the obvious side of things. That's the fact that, yeah, when you increase fiber, that's a lot of bulk, right? So you're going to probably eat less. But let's look at some data. There's a study that was published in Nutrition Review that looked at a ton of data. It was a huge review paper. And they found, even when adjusted for confounders, that the more fiber that was taken in, the less fat mass. The less fiber that was taken in, the more the body fat. Pretty clear as day. Now, this isn't just because of the bulk associated with fiber. Fiber also activates what's called GLP-1, glucagon-like peptide 1, which we see talked about a lot with the sort of advent and the popularity of semaglutide, right, the weight loss drug. So that's a GLP-1 receptor agonist that increases GLP-1, or acts as though it's increasing GLP-1. So it can kill your appetite, but it can also trigger fat to be burned and can trigger you to have more glucose homeostasis. But it goes beyond that. When we break down fibers, and the bacteria break down fibers, they produce these little molecules of fat, little teeny fat molecules called short chain fatty acids. And these short chain fatty acids inhibit the formation of fatty acids. They stop or they reduce fatty acid synthesis and they increase fatty acid oxidation. What does that mean? It means that it literally stops the formation of new fat. So it can regulate de novo lipogenesis. It regulates how fat is actually formed. This is huge. And in the same vein, it's regulating how fats are oxidized. It is literally a regulator of those two things to make sure we don't go too far in one direction and start storing a lot more than what we're burning. Now this has to do with the microbiome more than anything. It might take time to kind of rekindle the microbiome. So it might take 30 days or more. 
One of the ways that you can potentially expedite this a little bit is by taking a good probiotic along with increasing fiber. So if you increase fiber and you don't have the microbiome to support it yet, that's when you get bloated. That's when things are kind of cattywampus. Adding a probiotic in while you're increasing fiber is not a bad idea. I don't really recommend taking them all the time unless it's something that makes you feel really good. I go through periods of time where I take them, but I put a link down below for 30% off of Seed, which is literally the only probiotic I would recommend these days. It is a cool technology with a capsule inside of a capsule. So literally two capsules inside, like it's like you can see that, it's really cool. Now when you consume that capsule, it has sort of a multi-stage delivery. So you're getting prebiotics and probiotics. So that technology makes them exceptionally unique, plus they fund a lot of microbiome research, not just using their product, just in general, so that they can really be thought leaders in the space. So that link is down below for 30% off, first line of the description, right down below. Okay, fat loss is great but what about physical performance? So with this, there was a study published in PLOS One that took a look at over 2,600 people. And they found once again, even when adjusting for all confounders, the higher the fiber intake, the better the physical performance, the better the stamina, the better the strength, the better the endurance, the better the speed, depending on the type of exercise. Flat out, it was very clear. But then the real question that isn't so clear is why? And when you look at this data, there's a couple things that stand out. Well, one in particular, there was a reduction in C-reactive protein. Again, dose dependent. The higher the fiber, the less the inflammation. Inflammation can be a serious encumbrance to our physical performance. So if we have less inflammation and we can move better and perform better, not only do we get the benefits of moving better and performing better, but we get the metabolic and fat loss benefits that come with that as well. Speaking of metabolic benefits, what about the glucose side of things? You see, when we get older, one of the bigger problems that we face is what is called glycation. High levels of glucose are going to sort of caramelize, it's a very colloquial way of putting, but kind of glycate with proteins that are in our body. It doesn't mean the proteins are bad, it means the extra sugar that is binding to these proteins and causing a problem is bad. So the best way to combat the aging effect with advanced glycation end products is to reduce our glucose. Well, fiber has a big impact there. Not only does it slow down the overall glucose absorption, making it so you have less spikes, but there's also huge benefits with the short chain fatty acids again. The same short chain fatty acids, those little fat molecules that are a byproduct of the bacteria digesting fibers, the same things that regulate fatty acid oxidation also make it so that our cells soak up glucose better. And the last one that takes a little bit more time that you might notice maybe after 20 or 30 days is you start feeling like a whole different person as far as mood is concerned. There was a study in Frontiers in Psychiatry that looked at over 3,300 people. They found the more fiber that people consumed, again, adjusting for confounders and variables, the lower their anxiety symptoms. 33% less risk of anxiety. That's a very powerful amount. Why is this happening? More than likely, it's something that you probably have heard of, and we talked about it a little earlier. It's that gut-brain axis. A good portion of the serotonin that helps us feel good is actually manufactured in the gut. And it can travel through the vagus nerve to the brain. Now, it's not exactly the same as the serotonin neurotransmitter that's formed in the brain itself, but it does seem to have an impact. So there's a number of different theories, but we're still trying to figure out why. The bottom line is the larger scale data really does show that fiber improves mood. So although it might be a longer term thing to look at, if your mood changes, then the lens in which you look at life changes and it makes it easier to make better decisions with your diet. Now, the best ways that you could be implementing this are going to be with soluble fibers. I don't recommend just loading up on a ton of insoluble fibers. Here's what's interesting. The insoluble fibers are great. Tremendous for digestion, all that. But when you start looking at the insoluble fiber data, it can get confusing because most vegetables are rich in insoluble fiber. So are the benefits coming from the polyphenols, the flavanols, the phenolic compounds, whatever, in vegetables, or are they coming from fiber? So with that, you can cross-reference data and you find that soluble fiber, even things like chia, flax, psyllium, whatever, those get the same effects, but in a smaller concentration because they're more potent. So you don't need to say, I'm gonna eat a big bucket of salad. It can be as simple as adding a tablespoon of chia seeds to your smoothie or literally like putting it on a baked potato along with your ribeye. I don't care what proteins you eat, just increase the fiber. It's not a game, it's real. I'll see you tomorrow.